Good day everybody, CE Tech Dude here. A $20 dash cam sounds great. Is it too good to be true? Stick around and find out. The black web dash cam retails for only $20 and is found at Walmart. In the box you get a mini USB cable, an 8GB micro SD card, a suction cup mount. You also get a mini USB card adapter for power, which from some reviews I saw online, people said it's not long enough for their vehicle, but I found no issues in my Hyundai Sonata. Once you get the dash cam installed using the suction cup mount and the mini USB card adapter, the camera defaults to dash cam mode and will start recording when power is delivered via the mini USB card adapter. As a small internal battery that will power off quickly when you losing power from the card adapter. This dash cam can also be used as a webcam on your computer and can also take photos but I had no interest in this functionality, so I didn't test it. Although I'm sure the video quality is the same as it is in dash cam mode. This dash cam also has a motion sensing mode that when enabled will only record when it senses motion. I didn't know this at first, and I turned it on thinking that it would come on when the car was parked and it sensed motion from people walking by, but this was not the case. And it only records when driving and motion is detected, but this did not work well for me. This dash cam also features a G-sensor that, when enabled, will lock the video file that it's recording if it senses enough force from either braking or getting hit by another vehicle, which fortunately I was not able to test. Alright guys, this dash cam experience started out a little rough for me. The setup process can be confusing and the included instruction manual is missing a few key points. The first and most important key point that I want to let you know about is that the dash cam buttons do not work when this is recording a video. I thought I had a defective unit out of the box until I troubleshooted it. Once you stop recording by pushing the OK button, you can get into the menu and change the settings to your liking. On the topic of settings, this dash cam boasts that it has a 1080p Full HD recording capabilities. It even says 1080p on the body of the dash cam itself. And while yes, it does record in 1080p, the footage is just upscaled from 720p that it records in natively. I tested this dash cam in 720p and 1080p recording modes and found no real difference between the video quality. So I'd recommend leaving it in 720p to reduce the size of the files. This dash cam also features loop recording, which is not enabled by default. When you turn this on, you can choose between 5, 10, or 20 minute size video files. I decided to use 5 minute on mine, but the choice is yours. The 8GB SD card that comes pre-installed in this guy will get you anywhere from 2 to 4 hours of video footage until it fills up and starts re-recording over itself. That depends on what size loop recording you set and the video quality that you choose. On the topic of the SD card, as a man with short fingernails, good luck taking this out of the dash cam. I had a really hard time getting my fingernail in enough to push the SD card out to eject it, and just as hard of a time inserting it back in. So what I ended up doing was using the edge of a gift card or a credit card to push in the SD card and push it out, and that worked fine. Alright guys, now for the video quality. It's not great. For the price of this dash cam, it's acceptable enough to me, and it looks okay in the daytime. And in night mode, which you have to switch to manually by pushing the power button when you're recording, the quality suffers and is very dark. If you're really concerned with being able to see license plates clearly, I would not recommend this dash cam. In brightly lit settings, license plates are readable if the car is closed in front of you. And at nighttime, it's not readable unless you're under really bright settings or you have bright headlights. And even in the license plates, letters are kind of blurry. And I will show you the difference between 720p and 1080p in both daytime settings and night settings. So guys, it comes down to what I recommend this dash cam to you. If you want a dash cam that doesn't break the bank and are willing to work past some small issues, then yes, I would recommend this dash cam to you. If you need high quality video and ease of use out of the box, then no, I would not recommend this dash cam to you and I would recommend looking at something a little higher priced. 
But for me, I'm happy with this dash cam for the price I paid, and I'm going to be keeping it. Again, guys, these small issues that I had that I want to make you known of. The buttons do not work when recording except for the power button to change from day to night mode and the OK button to stop recording. Loop recording is not on by default. Motion sensing did not work well for me. The nighttime video quality is not great. You have to manually switch between day and night mode. 1080p quality is not better than 720p in my testing. And the SD card is hard to insert and inject. Alright guys, that's all I have today on this dash cam. I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like and subscribing so I know to keep making quality content like this. And if you think this dash cam is a good deal, let me know in the comments what you think. And as always guys, I'm CE Tech Dude and you just got CE Tech. Have a great day.